being a tester or a skilled web developer, you would definitely feel the need to test your applications for bugs and performance in all the available browsers and operating systems. But with so much of dependencies in hand, having not just different browsers, but the different versions too, it surely becomes a hefty task. And most importantly, all of these processes have to be automated to the most extent because in major companies, individually creating test cases and pipelines would be expensive and the most obvious, the least preferable method ever. Now this is where Selenium Grid, an extensively used server, comes to use. As Selenium says in its website, it creates a solution of testing our applications across multiple platforms and machines. Now if you wish to know more about Selenium Grid, I'll be covering the following things. First, we'll see what Selenium Grid is, followed by why do we need it, and then a brief section on its working and architecture, following which I'll be showing an easy tutorial of how to install and run a test case, which will help you create your own projects with ease. If you love watching videos like these, then subscribe to Edurika's YouTube channel and click the bell button to never miss out any updates. Also, if you want to learn more about Selenium after watching this session and wish to obtain Selenium certification course, please check the link in the description box below. Let's start with the content for today on Selenium Grid and if you're liking the video, do give a thumbs up to our Edurika channel and drop your comments or questions below. As you already understood from the earlier overview, Selenium Grid is basically a smart server which makes it easy to run tests on multiple browsers and machines. This is something all major companies like Microsoft, Google and JP Morgan put to use for testing their web applications. As you understand what Selenium Grid is, it would be much easier to understand why we need it at all. Looking at it specifically, it comes in the Selenium suite which also includes other softwares and features like Selenium WebDriver and Selenium IDE. And we saw how it can support browsers like Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Opera, Safari and all its different versions altogether. Apart from that, it can also run those browsers on multiple operating systems, creating an end-to-end -end testing environment. Being open sourced, it is also freely available and gets the fastest updates and developments with complete accessibility to all the information. But how does all of that work? Let's take a look at its architecture. Selenium Grid works in the hub and node model, where one particular hub is connected to multiple nodes and the capability to run on various machines, browsers and different versions of the browsers. Hub acts as the central point in the Selenium Grid which routes the test commands to the nodes. It also receives test requests from the client and routes them to the required nodes. Hub is launched on a single machine and with a definitive operating system and a browser, where the complete testing environment can be set. We'll be taking a look at how to do it in the next upcoming tutorial. Similarly, nodes are also set up which work on the test cases. They are used to set up different browsers and their versions, with also the ability to set it up on multiple devices running the compatible operating systems. Selenium has also defined other components in the architecture, which is explained in detail on its website, which can be useful to run Selenium in its fully distributed mode with routers, sessions and distributors well defined. Now that we have enough background knowledge on Selenium Grid, let's see a complete tutorial as to how it can be installed and used in 4 easy steps. In step 1, let's set up the prerequisites quickly. At first, we need to ensure that we are running the latest version of Java or Java 11 and higher. This can be downloaded from the official website. Then we would need to install all the needed browsers that we wish to test on. For this demo, I will be using Chrome and I will be running version 17. The next important part comes as the browser drivers. Since I am using Chrome, I have downloaded the browser version corresponding to that particular version of Chrome. Also do keep in mind that the versions of both driver and browser should be the same to run the Selenium servers. And finally, I will be using Eclipse IDE as this demo will be based on Java. This IDE can be downloaded from official Eclipse website. For the final prerequisite, we would need to download the latest Selenium Grid server from the official Selenium website. For this particular demo, I will be using the version 4 of Selenium Grid server. Now let's start with step 2. Now for step 2, I have created a new folder and pasted my Selenium server and Chrome driver that I will be using for this particular demo. This might seem a very basic step, but it will be very useful when we start with our step 4 that we will be seeing in a while. Now for step 3, I have opened my Eclipse IDE and by using WebDriver, I have written down my test case. Also, a few things that needs to be done before this is we would need to open a new project from here. We will be scrolling down to a new Maven project from others. Apart from that, we would also need to paste the Chrome driver that we will be using in a particular folder here. The particular version of Selenium server that is being used is to be uploaded to the path of this project by the steps that I will be following now. I can move down to my particular project name, right click and go to build path. 
from here, I can move down to configure build path and on the right hand side, I'll see an option called add external JAWS. From here, I can add the particular Selenium server that I'm using. Click apply and close. And after that, let's move to step four. Now for step four, I have come back to my particular folder that I did in step two. Here, I'll be using command prompt. I'll be writing down the following code to start my Selenium server. Now as you see, as I press tab, the particular folder name of Selenium server shows easily. This becomes very easy to find the folder and is a simple process. Since there is only one particular machine and one browser, I'll be using Selenium in its standalone mode. Now the server is starting and it is adding the required dependencies one by one. All right, now that we see the server process is completed, it has given us a particular address to go to. Now I'll be copying this particular address and moving back to my step three. Here in the hub URL, I'll paste this address. And after my code is complete, I'll go to the file and run this as an application. All right, so now that I see the application is running, I'll move to my Chrome browser and I'll paste the particular address that I was given by command prompt. Now this is my Selenium address and I see the sessions are running. In overview, I can see that four stereotypes for Chrome has been created. And in sessions, my default test case is running and active. You can also see that the particular web page that I put in in the code is also active here. If you like this video, do check out the Selenium certification training course on Edureka. It would help you to get complete knowledge on everything related to Selenium. Do give this video a like and drop down your comments. Happy learning! I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!